You know what? Let's start it. Let's play that intro. And I'll see you on the other side for Behind My Cloud. <laughs> Bonjour, hi Cloudies, welcome to Beyond My Cloud with me, Frank. And for the next two hours, we'll have fun coding. Today we have a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I want to share last stream that I forgot yet to upload was disastrous. <laughs> we spent two hours, a little bit more than two hours trying to make the demo work and it, it was straight into my face, but I didn't see it. So offline kind of cool down because you know when when something is not working and on front of the camera like stress is always building up so off camera was like oh that's why and then after that i took one evening and kind of like improve a few things so i want to share that with you and i think i will also create some blog posts or like maybe a more polished video because i'm always trying to do that and forget a stream is a good example so if I have like a quick way to find exactly that, I think it will be useful. So I want to share that with you. And uh, uh, we want to make sure. So um, next week I will be uh, presenting in an event. I want to talk about that in a few seconds. And I want to make sure the demo and I have all the steps to reproduce easily the demo, like the, the demo, like all the talk and everything is done. I just kind of want to polish and like make sure demo is great. Uh, see if we can change it. Maybe see if, um, I think what I want to do is put it in the open source on GitHub. So people could just like, after watching the talk, go in the, that repo and see the demo and kind of like, ah, oh, now I see it or just copy paste because it's faster this way. So this way, today we're working on the, um, the, the assets of those things. So sorry, Dev is already with us today. So, uh. I was asking just before the stream start, like how was the week? And yeah, uh, unfortunately he was uh, working on uh, moving old project. Okay, okay. So no, no migration, just like keeping the old .NET standard to that's old buddy. Yeah, all the dependencies, no kidding. And today, one of the particularity is uh, I want to share with you the database will be in a container because since I know I'm, I'm maybe late in the game, I don't know. For me, it, I thought it was complex. And last stream kind of <laughs> give that impression too. We spent so much time trying to do something, but it should be trivial. And once you you know it's super easy and then like to use it it's awesome because having your database in a container means that when you're not using that database you could free up all the resources it means you can very easily change database server maybe it's uh, sql server maybe it's postgres maybe it's mysql maybe it's like uh, mongo cosmo like you could have a tons of different so like you could swap different version different database and i wanted something that auto populate and everything and it was not working the way i was uh, expecting um so i'm happy that one evening i fixed all of that and uh, this week i was also chatting uh, with uh, one of the pm of uh, sql server and there's a lot of great content coming up so very excited about that so we need we need some library of what? We need some of your library putting in state where they can use some project. Ooh, okay. Mm, fun, fun, fun. Okay, so let me switch here because I want to talk about this announcement that was done by Mule uh, last week. This week, when was the 18? Last week. A week ago. Bonjour. Hi. Fragbird is in the house. Are you uh, on your bike, Fragbird? Go, 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 go. I 
I didn't bike this week. Ragbird is a streamer. Oh yeah, I should should do a shout out. Why can I? Yeah, this. Do I need the? Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if I need that. I saw a bunch of messages though. Whoops. Let me check. Was best viewer on stream boo. What? Feel like. Feel like it's a. How do I remove that? I don't want to pin this message. I don't want to reply. I want to remove it. Hmm. Well, well, well. Looks like someone had a bunch of uh, crappy chops. Mm-hmm. Why do I remove some of your messages, Mr. 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 Huh? That's not nice, and so many of you. Mm hmm be a pain. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Is, is there a easier way to do that? I'm sorry, just need to clean up some stuff. That's unfortunately, unfortunately, unfortunately. I cannot speak English. Damn. Do this and can I do that? Okay. Let this I cannot see the chat anymore. Okay. Cool. I have my mouse back. Okay, let's continue. That's not fun, guys. So, uh yes, the Azure Developer.net Day. I, I start talking about that. Very excited about this. Uh it's a, an event next Tuesday uh about .NET and a bunch of Azure developer stuff. Let me scroll. In fact, I have a link 
I don't want to put in the chat a good message. Not one of those. So I will add this in the note. So you could have a look. You could register. Uh, it's free, but just so like you could have kind of notification and everything. And uh, yeah, so there's cool event. So like very nice. Uh, should we watch it? Yeah, speaker lineup. That was a cool video, right? Don't tell me I'm not the only one. I think I will do a screenshot of that. Share that. Cool. Tank Fragberg. I wish there was a better way. And for me, it was just kind of like, while I'm doing that, I'm not paying attention for the for the stuff. I should move you as a... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Moderator. If you're just, I know you're you're not always there, and I'm fine with that. Like my my moderator right now is Triple B. Do you see him often here? <laughs> anyway, oh maybe I should uh, put the uh, Surly Dev too. Like he's always doing so much. So yeah, so let's have a look quickly on the speaker lineup for this cool event. So there's uh, Bruno will be talking about AI. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my biggest mistakes. But I love the guy, so you know. Uh GitHub Copilot, uh done by uh I will kill uh will butcher his name, Sub Suboyge. Uh and then Redis and .NET with Katrine, uh Data Stream uh with Brian. Uh we have Data API Builder with oh look at that. It's a me, Mario, uh, with my buddy Jerry. So I'll have a lot of fun doing that building. And that's kind of like the demo. We'll be using that today. I want to put some place because we're building, we're focusing a lot of time on the API for this demo and a bit also on the Blazor stuff. So like there's a lot of like kind of like it's half-baked uh, demo. So like I want to make cool part on, on the, that half-baked part. Uh, our uh, gRPC, I was like, I cannot read. Uh, with Jeff and Byron, uh, event-driven architecture. Oh, that would be cool with uh, Davide. Uh, and more enhancing development productivity Azure API Center. That would be cool with my colleague, Justin. Uh, VS Code production setup with RN. So a lot, a lot, a lot of great content. Again, I just put the, the URL in the chat. Go there, register. It will be fun. It will be on YouTube and Twitch. So, you know, I'm, I'm assuming it will be on the Microsoft Developer Channel. Yes, it will be Microsoft Developer Channel. Should I put this also in the chat? Let's do it. I'm assuming most of you here know about this channel, but just in case. So yeah, I will be on stream on uh, Twitch and YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, the fun is everything will be available. It should be, yeah, it will be available on demand after. I think we'll be publishing also maybe in the individual. I don't know if they will chop it up or if they will keep it as a big block. I'm sure they will do chapter at least. So that was one thing. The other thing was we want to work on the, where is it? Star Trek demo. So that's the demo we work, painfully work last week. Are you been slacking on the bike? Well, I did do a uh, 100. I don't know, like 100 miles, that's a lot of, uh, like 160, 
What's the ratio of miles kilometers? Yeah, 160. 161. That's pretty good. I think the most kilometers I ever did... I did pass 100, so let's say I did 101. So I think my biggest ride was 62 miles, I think. But yeah, I didn't bike. Did I bike? I think last time I biked was last Sunday. And it was a short one. I want to go outside. And it was like, here, like the bulb, bulb, like the leaves are coming out. Like, life is coming back after winter. Uh, like, three weeks ago, we had snow. So now, like, you know, it's getting back. And it was like, 15 degrees celsius and uh so like very nice weather and stuff like that and for the past two three days minus two below freezing temperature i'm like oh i want to go bike i want to do stuff and like it's it's not nice i was hoping to do some kayak but, you know so last week, uh, yeah, because let's. So you need to prepare, two hundred fifty-seven kilometer. That's that's a that's that's a legit ride. One one shot. Like just like, is it a race or is it by yourself? Like you're oh I'm going visiting my friend or something like that. What I want to do this summer is do big rides, but I'll kind of like uh, backpacking or uh, cyclo tourism where I'll have all my stuff and I camp and I do maybe one or two nights. It's an event. Oh. I love that. I was hoping to do some, uh, some event like that also. Uh, but they all fall at the same time as my vacation. So, and uh, we, we need to move the vacation this, this year anyway, because I was asked to do the keynote at a DevOps day in Halifax. So my wife was like, okay, we'll stay home, go to Halifax, have fun with your, uh, your buddies. But keynote, that's cool. You know, it's hard, it's hard to say no. So I was like, yeah, let's do this. So looking forward to do in August will be the keynote. But I think like uh, two days before there was an event, pretty cool event I was, ah, should I do it? And I was like, mm, not sure. Like I will be stressed, like I will be stressed bef like two days before the event. And I think if anything happened, <laughs> you know, I want to be in good shape. So I think, I think it's not a good idea to do like a big event, like in the wood and track and stuff like that two days before going to a, a big event like that. Hey, TBD. Welcome to the stream. Hello, all. I was going to raid F. Boucheros, but I saw you get attacked with... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we got like a few little uh, digital friends. Less on less less pleasant digital friends and I like now I put the shield on and I don't know uh, if I stop the um, sorry dev but because I don't mind those like they're just playing the game like they're friendly but yeah oh yay oh I landed. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that, sorry to have like, but uh, maybe next stream I could turn in like remove that shield. But uh, so it will be a, a quieter chat this week, this stream. Yeah. They don't follow the channel, so they don't get even gift sub.
Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm not, like, I don't understand all that spamming stuff. Like, what, why? But I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not in the good mindset to understand why they are doing that. Is there money? Like, in there? Like, just like a bing but or just like to be a, to be a jerk. Like, there's no good side. Is there... You know, if I was one trying to pull people or like if I was trying to get like fake user to boost my audience and stuff like that, that I would understand. But like just like like this, like nobody will click on those links. They will be banned immediately. Is there is there like is it fun to do? Like is there I don't, I don't understand anyway. Like, why 900? That's a lot, 900. I mean, that person spent a lot of time prepping to create new user and stuff like that and everything. Anyway, let's switch to our project I want to share with you. So, uh, Yes. Okay. I don't need that. I was just to share. So in this project, let's go here. This is the Star Trek demo. Uh, it's based on a Jerry Nixon database about Star Trek. And uh, we're using that in our demo. And uh, obviously in the demo, we're using it in Azure and stuff, but I went, ah, I would like to have it locally. And I have something similar for my game 2D6, uh, dungeon, uh, 2D6 dungeon, where I create my database in a container because I love that, it's super simple, it's very portable and stuff like that, but I use my SQL. And then when I create that container, there's script, SQL script that runs to create the schema and then populate that database. It worked great, I love it, and everything. I was trying to do the same thing with uh, an SQL server, and it was not working. So I, last stream, I was like, okay, whatever, I will just create a container, like run my script using like a, you know, data studio, whatever, and then connect my API. And we were having a lot of issues, it was not working. Off stream, I fix everything. So. I fixed the script because the script was part of the problem. So my, the way the script was written, it was not working. Or well, like I, I needed first to had to create the database, right? So I had a database in an SQL go is kind of like a commit. So I'm T SQL, a go is a kind of a commit. So I did that. So create the database, switch to that database. And after that, the script was good. You could use semicolon also. So it was all good. That was provided uh, to me by uh, Jerry. So I, I didn't code that part. So I just, did, I, and even that, I think maybe he had it, or maybe he was doing it in command. I don't know. So that, that was done. And uh, so now I want to create a container and when that container start I want to run that script so I did a docker compose and this is the database part of it and let me explain it to you so I'm using the SQL server I don't specify any tag should say this version this version for me it was good i give it a name uh for me it was clearer like this is totally optional those two things uh but it really helped to uh to understand what's happening otherwise you got because the docker file was called it's in the folder data api database dash api it was database dash api and then SQL server, like it was a fun key, a very long name. I was, eh, I would like to have it like shorter. So I, I give it a name, then simplify that. Then you can create environment variable. 
I think when we did it last week, I was running from a Docker command. So I switched to Docker Compose so I could create the two containers in one go. So environment was really easy. This is important and was part of the problem last week. So I need to accept those stuff. But we had that in the Docker container, but we need, all, we need it also in the connection stream. It was not there. Uh, the password. One thing I did improve, and that I've been looking for like a few seconds to just like spend time and understanding how it works. I was putting hard-coded password and I was like, yeah, it's okay because it's for dev purposes, right? So I was like, I'm just running it locally. The database, that container is not accessible elsewhere. It's just for my computer when I'm working on it. But I know better that whatever you do in dev will end up in prod. <laughs> so I was like, I need to spend time and like understanding how I can make it better. And so I will do all of that and I will explain later. So before last week, it was the, uh, I was hard coding the password here. I will get back to this part. We need because it's SQL server and that each database have a different port. So for database servers, uh, 1433, and then I'm mapping a volume to get my, um, script important if we want a script over there and I saw different. So I like my, uh, is only two container. I saw some stuff running three container where you start one with the database and the other one is kind of just like the, it just spawn, create the stuff and then like get out. So the container is vanishing. I was like, yeah, it's fine. Like two containers. I could, I could have three containers. I could do that, but I was, oh, I would like to have it in two containers. Um, so that's why I, I did this way, but, uh, we could do it also in three containers. I wonder, I think it's faster in three containers. And then that's where all the magic happened that I didn't have last time. And, uh, I was trying to, I was doing it manually. It was like, I want, I want to do it automatically. So what it does is it create the server. It's waiting 30 seconds. And that's why I think having and, and waiting the 30 seconds, it's a arbit, uh, like it's random number. I just picked 30 seconds because I knew 30 seconds later, it's for sure. The server will be up except if there's a major issue. So, and then it's calling SQL command and connecting to it. and using that file. So we'll execute that file. And then it's sleep infinitely like that bash is just kind of, okay, I'm done, stop. And that's it. So the database will be created. And then the, the, the other container that we have here, that's for our DAB or API or data API builder. If you don't know that thing, it's really, really awesome. So last time we were trying to have that and we, we were hard coding the connection, the connection string into the configuration of the DAB file. So I will show that later and it was not working. So part of me trying to remove the password, I move the connection string into a environment variable that you can see here. So I was saying, okay, the, the host need to be this host Docker internal. Now in cell catalog track, that's the, which database, right? Where is it? And one part that was missing last week was this the trust certificate. That's why I was never connecting. I was connecting with different tools. When I was in, um, uh, data studio, it was working. The same connection string was working because I had that checkbox at the bottom of the connection string form saying trust certificate. But when I was typing the connection string, that part was missing. That's why 
<laughs> we are so close. We spend so much time. I'm afraid to uh, to say it, but yeah, it was it was right there. So the problem last week was this. We were missing that part. So that's unfortunate. And uh, yeah, after that, I pass again. I map the the Star Trek Jason, and I change the name inside the container for dab config. So by default, the container is looking for a, a file called dab config. I could have called it here dab config, but I thought Star Trek Jason was I don't know. It was making more sense since the uh, it's an API. Uh, it needs to be public, so it's opening the port 5000, and uh, it depends on SQL database. And one thing, uh, I, I I kind of assumed that, but was not sure, but after reading the doc, I was like, oh, that's the big difference. So when you put depends on, it's not the readiness, but it's just the fact that the server is up, the container is up. And that's why when you start those, you'll see that container failing. It's trying to connect to the database and it's failing and it's failing and it's failing. And I was like, why? Like I said, depends on. But you could do, there's another thing you could do that is a uh, health check, something like that. That will be where it can be ready. So you could say, try to run that query, run every blah, blah, blah. I could do that. Uh, I just didn't do it, but I could, I could be able to do something like that. I just like, Try this. If it's not working, then try in 10 seconds. Uh, in fact, I could do that. That would be uh, that could be interesting. So just a cleaner experience when you look at the log, because right now it was just like, hey, it's failing, it's failing, it's failing. So now let's talk about how I did remove. Oh, and I don't want before we go, I want to show. So that long Jason, and I'm, I'm scrolling super fast. There's no secret here, but it explained the API. You can do it very easily when you use uh, the uh, data API builder, CLI. It's just a, okay, uh, dab in it, and it will create an empty structure and say, okay, dab, add this entity mapping that column, uh, add blah, blah, blah. And like, you can add all of those and it will create that JSON document for you. So for example, if I go up here, I can see entity actors. Again, keep in mind, we're talking about Star Trek here. So, okay, entity actors. So the source is DBO actor. The type is a table. The key field is ID. Uh, it, it will be available through an API, a GraphQL API. True, I could decide no. Uh, it will also be available using a REST API. Uh, you could define some permissions. So right now it's everything is possible, whatever it's the demo purposes, right? So permission anonymous, but you could decide, oh, just the admin, just those role. So you could really customize uh, like all your entities inside this relationship. So right now, like there's relationship uh, from actor to character. Because did you know when people are playing in, in movies? It's not their real life. They're having a role. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how you define that. So that's when we create this. So now to remove the password. Oh, I want to show this. Uh, let's let's talk about the database first. Yeah, let's talk about the database first. Let's just scroll up a little bit. A little bit. Can I remove this maybe? Now if I go up. Cool. So we are in the database. Oh, I'm right in the in the way. Frank. There it is. Cool. So when we're running, initially I was trying to have it in the script so it could be better, but then like it's just had complexity to pass the password and stuff. So that's why since it was like very simple, I kept it in the Docker Compose. But I feel it would be better if it was not in the Docker Compose, but at the same time, anyway, I'm, I'm not like an expert in Docker Compose stuff. So I thought I was 
clean. So in that entry point, I can refer to the, par the, the environment variable using the dollar sign dollar sign. Right? Those are the environment variable I just pass here. Environment variable. So initially I was having the password here and then I could use it there, like using that dollar sign dollar sign. I was like, yeah, that's cool. Like inside the container, it won't be there. But it's it's here. So what I can do instead is just using environment file. I didn't know about that. That's kind of very easy. And you just specify dot of like you could you could have different name, but like the the basic one. So like you could have one for I don't know dev QA prod whatever different file environment file. So it go to different. Uh, and then you can pass tons of variables over there. So it could be that your connection swing, the name, the password, the users and stuff like that. And this, so Docker Compose, you will push it to your GitHub repo, right? And there will be no secret here. Like there is no password nowhere. Like if you go in there, uh, like right now, the repo is private, but I will put it public soon. I'm just waiting for the event. Um, This file, env, now let me show it. It's here. Just have the name of the variable and then the equal. And you could use that after in your file. Here, dollar sign, curly brackets, that same name. Do we have a, a maybe if I have the Docker Compose stuff, that would be cool. Just to see like an um popping up the value or something like that. Do I have the, uh, I have the Docker. Maybe I need the Docker compose, but that could be cool. When you mouse over, you see the value. So yeah, so that's how, this is how you do it. So I did this. So that was very simple. And now for the uh, dab, I wanted to do the same thing. So I did this. So again, the password I use this here and I put the full connection string inside the environment variable called my connection string. So that's why here in the script in the, uh, the JSON document, I could just say, hey, environment variable, look for my connection string and put it there. It was simpler to do that to have otherwise would be like weird embedding of stuff. So I thought that was cleaner. So you still have a very clean here thing. And on the other side, it's kind of like, hey, here and I'm using the stuff. So I thought that was pretty clean. So you understand it's a connection string. Uh, I could have like if the user, let's say the user change depending on like your environment, you could have that. But yeah. That's how you do it. So you use environment file. That was cool. I, uh, nice founding. I was pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Maybe if you if you are a long time user of Docker, you already knew that. I play with Docker. I love Docker and containers and stuff, but I always use it for myself. So uh, you know, just like yeah, yeah, just do this. It's a one app and stuff and think. But now more going. I love it so much now, like I'm using, okay, more containers, more stuff. And you know, it's okay, let's go for the best practices here and security being secure, being very important. So if we run that, uh, let's go, oh, where was, let's do, let's be lazy a little bit. And it was suggest me, suggesting. Do you want to go there? Yeah, I want to go there. Cool. So now, I want to run this because it's Docker Compose. I don't need to specify any file. So I just need to do Docker. I think I have an alias. Let's try that. If I do, I think it's Docker Compose. Oh, 
was long. Oh, Docker is not started? Oh, that's possible. My, uh... <laughs> All that, I was like, what's happening? Why is it taking so long? Last week, I don't know if you're still there, Fragbird, but last week was a good week. I think I landed twice, and uh, a lot of people were landing. It looked like I may be landing uh, so close, but just like so proud to be beside. Look, I'm on each side of the landing zone. Okay, so I think Docker now is started. Let's try again. Docker Compose. The music is good today. Can you hear the music with my new setup? Is it too low? I stop smashing the, the mic with my glass of water. Ooh. So Trek API and Trek DB are done. So now I'm assuming if we go back in the browser, I could do localhost. If I could see, I could see here, healthy. And now I could do Let's go Swagger first. So now I have my Swagger API. Character in the series, the species, and some relationship database. In fact, I think in his example, yeah, in his example, uh, initially, that's one thing I changed for the original database. Uh, not database, but uh, configuration of the data API builder. It was not exposing that in REST, no relationship. But in my demo, I wanted to have something, so I changed it. So we have this. So uh, let's say we want to see all the character. We could say, uh, let's say, get for all of them. We can just say, try it, execute. And we'll we'll see them here, right? And we could do the same thing saying rack sir. It's plural plural? Nope. Oh it's API. Always forgot. What is it? I think it's API. Yeah, so we have it here. All the stuff. So that's cool. The data API builder also. Do you know data API builder? I know like I, I speak about it a little while, uh, a few times on this stream, but let me know if you want me to uh, get back to it quickly. Like two minutes max. Or if you want five or more. <laughs> Again, <laughs> like if you're like, yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know. Uh, and then there's also a GraphQL. So if I go GraphQL, Now I have this, so I have this banana, uh, banana cupcake thing. I forgot how it's called. Banana cake pop. Uh, and and it's done with the same team. So like the data data API builder, they are using hot chocolate, I think. Um, to uh, create that server, that API server. Banana Cake Pop is the client here to kind of build your queries. So here I have like, uh, I have my queries that I can run. Minimize that. You can see the same result as before. The fun of it now is I can have the series, Star Trek, then have all the names, so James Kurt, Spock, Leon, like so I have all the, um, I can have multiple, if you're doing rest, I will have to do, give me all the characters, give me all the series, and then give me that relationship, call, so three calls to the database, full, and then on, on the website, on like whatever, kind of like 
match my way to rebuild that series. Instead of in GraphQL, you could make the database server do its work, make it work for what it's good for, querying data and like the result comes like already kind of set up. So that's that's a pretty cool uh, feature of GraphQL. So this tool, the banana cupcake, there's IntelliSense. So you do query. And now if I do control a space, I have, okay, do you want to talk about characters, series, species? So maybe I say, hey, species. I just want all species. So now I need to go and say, okay, what do you want in the species? I have even a little bit more about that. So let's say, yeah. Show me this, and again, I could say, okay, I want to see their names. So if I run that, I will have all the different species. Uh, and if, then I could say, hey, give me all the character of those species. So I could item again. I wish there was like a items. It would be something like that. So now I could say the name. So now we'll have all human. Sorry. Looks like we have some visitor. The dogs are turning crazy. Maybe I should go see. And uh, after that, we have all the Vulcan. So like there's Puck, Tuvok. I'm not good. I won't say all those names. But then we have the Android with Data, of course, and like Klingon, and like all all the stuff. So that's pretty cool. And then in your app, this query you can take it and and use it in your app. And the same group that does the hot chocolate and the banana cake pop, they do strawberry shake. And that's the library to build client. So if we go here, that's part of, of, of the talk. So I could run that. So if I go in the source, whoops folder and I do a .NET run. Let me show you first. So I, I created a little Blazor application, right? And I had it here, the Star Trek Grass and Star Trek GraphQL. So we'll see the same result where I show, you know, that query we were seeing earlier in the banana Okay. Oh, it's in the name here. Banana cake pop. Now I know. And now we know. Should have that sounds. Previously on Frank's channel. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. I should have run that earlier, like in French and Frank's channel, where where we spend hours working on something that didn't work. Um. So yeah. So this query here, wait, except the the start date. This query, where I have the, the name of the series and the name of the character, that's what I use here. Well, like here it's rest. So I, like I said, I, I did use those three tables and then ma mash it. But like in GraphQL, it's the same result, and but in one query, one shot to the server. And if we look to the code, I will stop it now. So if we go here in the component page, let's start with REST. I'm assuming a lot of people are familiar with REST. And I'm not sure what I should do. Uh, let's, can I do a poll? Where is it? Manage poll. Create a new poll. Let's make it, let's make it run for, can I make it longer? No. 
There it is. Want to pull at the top? So please tell me, what should I use? Should I use GraphQL in my demo or should I use REST API? Which one would interest you the more inside a Blazor app? Wow. My nose is just... Okay, so REST, what I did... Well, to use both of them, uh, I use dependency injection. So if we look first before we go there, here in program, uh, I did this, where you say, hey, add, add a scope, and I'm adding an HTTP client, where well, I specify just like the server. Uh, when you're using, uh, or maybe I should, I could have you done the API also. Wonder if it will work. Anyway, I put just the, the server name here. And that's the only thing you need for REST. So I had that. So now let's keep the program open. Let's get back to it. First, let's go into the page REST. There it is. You need to put, because I'm using the new version. So now by default, and I searched for that because it was not working. I think we had also that issue. Was it online or not online? Maybe I was not online, but I did just like new blazer and uh it was not working when i was clicking on the button you need to have interactive server otherwise it's client side only so I, you need to specify it when you want server code and obviously uh did, did, did. i need it so after that i have like a very classic table i could change it oh that's one thing i could do i could change it to use the new fluent ui or at least the new table uh, and blazer that is uh, cleaner and their sort and stuff. I should do that. That would be cool. Um, and then I loop through all the series, put the name and the character value. So that's very easy. But because I'm in REST, like I said, I needed to make three queries to the, the server, right? So I'm using that HTTP client, and I, like we know from what we saw earlier, like using Swagger, that it's all coming from JSON. So JSON async. I'm looking for the series list, uh, series character list. This, those are classes that I created. I will show you after, but like they are Poco classes. And now I have I have API here. Because I didn't put it here. I think if I put API here, I should be fine. Maybe I should move that. Let's try. Because usually I prefer cleaner code here. So here will just be series. Series character and character. So yeah, so series to get all the the series, all the character, and this is the relationship database, the table database, table. And after that, I know I could have done it like in probably in a fancier lambda expression, but I was like, hey, oh, maybe a copilot can change that. If I say this. Modify. If I just say rewrite this, what it will suggest? Uh, okay. Um, Thank <laughs> you. 
Is it? Yeah. So for that, I think let's copy it. I don't know. Which one is clearer? Uh, I think I may need to go a little bit smaller. Let's close this. Can I see both at the same time? Maybe if I remove this. I can't. Let's go smaller. Yeah, this or that. I think I prefer this. I was I kept that one because I thought let's go for simplicity. But I think I prefer this one better. So let's put this in common. And let's test it. So now we remove the API. We have a Lambda expression instead. Can I just uh, F5 it? Let's try that. C sharp. Yeah. it work? Oh, maybe it's not. Uh... Is it compiled? Run. Why was not working? Target process excite without raising. It's weird. Okay. Let's do a dot net run. Oops. Start here. Now, if we go rest, <laughs> it's not working. So do I need to, do I need to have this? Not working, that's weird. I don't understand that error. The target process exit without raising. A dot net doesn't found that net. Dot net is here. Maybe because dot net run was still up? I don't know. Sounds weird to me. Okay, now it's working. Okay, so I needed the slash. Cool. Interesting. So it worked. I stopped that. Now it's stopped. So nobody votes. Okay, well, I guess if you don't care, it's fine. It's fine with me. Nobody votes on my 
poll. I did some effort, people. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so that was rest. So I will keep that. But uh... cool. So here we we have it. So okay. So now for GraphQL. I need to add this, this part. Let me zoom back a little bit, a little bit. So we need to add a service and we need to add Star Trek client. But if you do that, it won't exist. That's why we need Strawberry Shake. So in our project, where is the project file? I added Strawberry Shake Blazer. Only that one, because we are in Blazor, we don't need to have the scaffolding stuff. We don't need that scaffold, I forgot, generating code. We don't need that. We just, we don't need the HTTP transport. We just need Blazor. Everything else is embedded. I think if you run from a console application, you need to add a little bit more. Do we want to do that? I could do a console application. I'm not sure. I want to do that now. Do I have time? I mean, I, I didn't told you guys, but uh, I may end the stream a little bit earlier. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we had this package. And then we need to do uh, .NET tool strawberry. Oh, I already forgot, is it? Like, did I wrote it in my readme? Yes, I, I said, okay, so you need to do the uh, tool manifest. Let me go bigger. Not that big, Frank. Oh, my nose is. I have a new. Hopefully my mute button worked because that was loud. <laughs> that was definitely a dad sneeze. My nose is like itching this morning okay so you need to do a dotnet new manifest and then you uh dotnet new install tool and you could do local if you want dash l to have it just in that specific folder then you say uh well i i did add uh, this and then you did dotnet graphql in it and you pass the url of your server that will create a file that will create the file. Where is it? Here, the GraphQL. Am I hiding it? No. GraphQL RC. If you go here, it's a good idea to add uh, a namespace. But that here, that's the name. And unfortunately, there's more. There's more uh, uh, properties, settings that you can set. Uh, I think there's like a generated folder and stuff like that. I didn't see, like I saw that in other sample video. Initially I was using that, but I don't see it anymore. So sometime I wish because uh, class name and properties the first time I was kind of like not sure how to find that and I had to like a few uh, you know like dot 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 athlete at least I had IntelliSense to help me but um, I wish it would it would be better so you just do this and, and like now it's a little bit too small so you specify the name of your client so that will be the name of your client but you, you still need to go and edit had a namespace. We, we could, when we create that, specify the namespace also. That would be cool, but that's not too bad. And then uh, if you go in GraphQL, same thing, interactive mode. We have to inject our client from the program. Right. For the rest, we added 
HTTP client for the GraphQL, we are adding, uh, maybe it will break the, the HTTP client. Maybe not, I don't think so. So uh, yeah, so we do like, we need this one. I think that's the only one we need. Yeah, so now if you if we go here, it's the same like looping through show stuff. What I did instead now, like in initialize, I'm using that client and I say, get character by series. It's like, Frank, where, what, what that's coming from? That's the query. Remember the banana cupcake? Where is it? Let's close that one. Here, this, the query, that's the result we want. So this query, that's the query. So it's series by, uh, it's character by series name, right? Character by series name. In my head, that's how it should be called. So that's why I called it that way. So that was, that was me. The way you do it is you had a file query. I did a folder here. Whoops, that's not what I intended to do. I want this control Windows 8. Not what I intended to do. This, voila. I did the folder, where is it? Query. <laughs> looking on, look like I'm looking at it, right? Just here. But I'm looking at my second screen instead of like looking in front of me. So here, if I expand it, I have a get character by Siri dot GraphQL. That's the secret of it. And if I open that, we'll see the series that we had before. So the way you put it is the query and you give it a name. Oh, can I do that? And uh, let's get out of this. One thing I found was confusing a little bit is this was very similar, except I didn't have the, the name. If I go here, see like it's the same thing except for this. Can I put the name here? Can I do this? Ah! Will it be identify as? And yeah, I, by the way, you could you could use still like a HTTP client and just pass an object like doing a instead of a get doing a post, and in your object you have like a like in a curly bracket, so that would be your object, right? So query and then having that that thing for you, it's just done for you, but. Uh, Okay, so I could, that's cool. So I could run, I could have that and just like copy pasting it, right? It's the same, mostly the same. Okay, so I'm using tab and it was using a different, but like it was the same. So. That's how you do it. So having the GraphQL is very, very important because if we go again and look in the config file here, it will look for from all folder and you could specify that. I know at some point, uh, maybe because it was on console application, stuff like that, people was having issue because like document, this, some document were taking twice. I think it was the schema since schema was a, a is a graphql file i think it was supported so you could say hey only that specific folder oh, I'm, I'm going to too fast uh, where is it let's close this folder i don't need it where's where is it oh uh yeah here so yeah so this will generate the client for us and the client will get those queries and this get character by Siri is the thing I'm using in the page. Where is it? The razor page, not the razor page on the GraphQL page. 
There it is. So here, get character, and I say execute it async. What are the other properties? I think that's it, right? Yeah, it was executing async. I need to do different things also. So this will retrieve. And after that, I thought. So I'm saying, okay, from that output, I want the data. So the squiggly is, you know, like that pop up thing is when I'm trying to show things is it's not nice. Wish I could turn it off. Uh, so it's temp because this data then series and then items. Remember when we look at it here, it's data series and then I'm looping through all the items and then for each name then like I go items again then names. So that's what I, I did. And that's how it worked. And I was pretty happy about it. So now, uh, now I'm, I'm I'm not sure what I should do. And I see the time is flying here. And I think I think I will I will be it for now. Uh, I'm still hearing the dogs barking, so I think I will need to go up and uh, calm down. I know it's a way shorter stream than usual, but uh, we may go. So. The repo right now is private, but I will put it public pretty soon. If you want to see for like the Docker stuff, if you're interested to see the, uh, the code, how to use the strawberry thing, I may have different clients also there just to show the difference. That's the beauty of it. So I hope it helps. I know it was short, but I wanted to share since last stream was such like a disappointment at least for me because nothing was working today i want to show how it works i think it i probably write a blog post about it just so i can google myself later with google with bing obviously uh or dot dot go um but yeah so i wish you a good weekend go out see the sun and uh, i will see you next week and with that Bye-bye, everybody.